There is a person I help with the things of God. And that person really has changed so much. So much. I am amazed. Not saying that person is perfect, but that person has changed so much. I would say, and I truly believe this, one of the things that was trying to bring that person back into their old ways was that person's so-called friends, or maybe I should say either friends or acquaintances, maybe I should say friends. Like, I would, <laughs> so many hours, teach that person, teach that person, teach that person, and go through this with this person, I mean, go through this and that with that person, like, I really placed so much effort in that person, so much effort. And as it seemed like, probably I would say at that time, current and like past friends, if I am saying this correctly, would try to enter or re-enter or try to, I would say, disrupt that person trying to change. I am telling you. And if not that, I believe other things would happen I would guess, trying to discourage that person to not live for Jesus Christ. And what I taught that person, and this is what I may teach some people as well, when you choose to live for Jesus Christ, you may have to leave people alone. You may have to leave, as in, you may have to leave old friends alone if they aren't willing to change. You may have to leave them alone. Excuse me. Kevin, I was their friend for many years. You know, I can't abandon them. This is about heaven and hell. Would I go to hell for a friend? Would I burn for eternity for a friendship? Would I be willing to go to the lake of fire because of some type of loyalty I have for another human. Think about that. Are you willing to go to hell and probably be tormented so much, then go to the lake of fire, which is worse than hell? Would you be willing to go to those places over friendship? Anyways, while I was helping that person, not only that person's friends or old friends or whomever like that, I believe it was one or more of that person's family members. If you are weak in Christ and you know it, if someone has the ability 
to influence you the wrong way, stay away from that person. I think I learned so much by helping that person. Like, I think I learned maybe more about myself, maybe, or maybe not. I forget. But look, whoever said living for Jesus Christ is something really simple, something really easy, like you don't have to carry your cross. I think that person is in ignorance or maybe they are lying. For me, and the way I see it, and I may be wrong about this, you have to chase after Jesus Christ. You can be serving Jesus Christ for many years, and as it seems, in my opinion, you have to constantly chase after him. Like, to make this easy to understand, I think some people may say to me, Kevin, I have read the Bible twice, like the whole thing twice, and I don't need to read the Bible anymore. No, 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 no. From what I understand, and I may be wrong about this, you have to constantly seek after Jesus Christ so much. If you can, do it every day. As if Jesus Christ is not standing in one spot, you have to chase after him. I truly believe this. Now, you may say, Kevin, where is that in the Bible where we have to chase after Jesus Christ, you know, so much and stuff like that? Okay, look at the fruit in your own life. Like, you aren't chasing after Jesus Christ right now, right? Okay, how are you doing with him in your day-to-day -day life? Like, how are you doing? Are you doing really bad? Probably so, right? Not saying I am perfect, not saying I am better than you, but what I have been learning, which I truly believe this is right, you have to actively seek after Jesus Christ so much. The more, the better. Constantly pray if you can. Constantly fast if you can. Constantly do things of Christ as much as you can. That is what I mean by chasing after him. But anyways, I would help that person. And that person went through so much stuff, so many problems. That person had, I would say, the benefit of me teaching that person. Not saying I am this top teacher of the whole world, no. But I was really amazed by how many problems that person was going through. But pretty much what I would tell that person, look, in so many words, I don't remember the exact words, but pretty much always look forward. No matter what happens, no matter what problems come your way, keep your mind on Jesus Christ don't let anything sway you from trying to live for Jesus Christ. Don't let anything discourage you 
from trying to do what is right. Don't let your problems be a discouragement to you in trying to live for Jesus Christ. That person went through, I would say, so many problems. I was going through it with that person, as in helping that person. You see, I go through problems. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I may cry. Sometimes I may get a little bit depressed. Sometimes I may get really angry or whatever else. But I believe I have learned to place as much as I can of my focus on Jesus Christ and less or not on my problems. You have to chase after Jesus Christ. As if he is constantly moving, you have to chase after him. You can't just, you know, do what you want to do all day and only pray for three seconds or only fast for two minutes or you know, like do little stuff. No, let me say it like this. <clears throat> if you are interested, I guess for the most part, for probably many people, <clears throat> if they are interested in a man or a woman, I think they are going to be actively in some way or form trying to get to know that person, right? Maybe you will talk to that person. Maybe you will talk to other people about that person you like. Maybe you are going to do things perhaps to become more acquainted with that person, right? I know for myself, maybe I should not say, but I guess I can say back in my past, if there was someone I liked, you know, maybe not everyone, but with some people, I would come up to them and speak to them. And then maybe we would call each other and, and maybe I will ask that person this and that. So I would what? Spend time with that person either by phone, maybe in person, but ultimately, what am I doing? I am spending time after that person. I mean, I am spending time with that person. In the same sense, you have to do that with God as well. What if I am married and I only talk to my wife <laughs> twice a week? I mean, once a month for five minutes. Now, will I be close to my wife? I don't think so. How will my marriage be with my wife? Probably very bad. Because if I am married and communication between me and my wife is pretty much non-existent, like what type of intimacy Man, please listen to what I am saying. What type of intimacy is that? I am only speaking to my wife for maybe five minutes in one month. Like, what type of bondage, not bondage, what type of bond, what type of intimacy, what type of closeness do I have with her? Look now. Give God more time. I hope 
hope this is making sense here. You have to chase after God. I am not saying I pray to God six hours a day. I am not saying I fast for three months at a time. No. I probably would die. <laughs> but give God time. Stop thinking if you think this way that living for Jesus Christ is something really simple or you can have it as a side dish. Like you have your chicken and I guess your orange juice and then you have Jesus as a side dish. No. If you choose to live for Jesus Christ, expect problems. Expect it. Expect it. I don't know anyone who is trying to live for Jesus Christ who doesn't have problems. Please show me. Excuse me. I think Peter had problems. I think Paul had problems. I think John and all those folks like that had problems. So you believe you can live for Jesus and have no problems? Makes no sense, right? Let me stop here. God bless you.